Okay, so the point of this video, and I'm gonna keep it really short at the start, and then we're gonna get into some details that are very, very important. First off, you ever have that friend who just has insane movement, and then they're bouncing around, you know, wall bouncing, flipping around, and all of a sudden, they can't hit the side of a barn? And then you have the opposite person who moves around like this, crouching up on people without any reason, right out in the open, but then all of a sudden they can land every single shot and have perfect recoil control. Right? I call these the extremes on both ends, and I, I think both of them are honestly a major problem. And I'm going to highlight today how you train these and how you isolate them, because there's a lot of different things I want to talk about here. To add some clarity is why you train these fundamentals, which is more or less the goal of this video to remind you to train them. You train until you feel so confident and comfortable you don't make mistakes, and focus on other fundamentals that make you a better player. Now, to add even more detail to this, is that as you train, you're going to run into other players that are going to be even more comfortable. So let's say you're a gold level of comfort, but you want to get to a diamond plus level of comfort within a certain specific category that can be within aim, game sense, positioning, which is about what we're going to discuss right now. Now, when we're discussing the basics when it comes to playing Apex Legends, we have game sense, general game sense and as a whole, knowing where your teammates are at. You have positioning, you have communication, you have just an understanding of your utility, then you have aim, and of course you have movement. Now, each of these categories deserves a bit of attention. I'm always very concerned about the player who can move but can't hit anything. And I'm concerned about the person who can aim but has no sense of positioning. These are all very, very important to really isolate. It can be very basic such as just practicing over and over again to make sure you can get your super zip line jumps over and over again. I have in the link down in the description down below, the whole point of this video is that there's a lot of resources online, whether it's my content, whether you learn how to tap strafe and do it on my channel, such as even putting like scroll wheel and you doing a super zip line jump is simply, you know, pressing interact and then scroll wheel down just to spam the input of jump. You know, and if you want to tap strafe, you know, you slide forward and then you use your scroll wheel to spam W forward. So very, very fast, like tutorial. There's better videos on my channel that do this. So the whole point of this video is that it's very important that you get that foundation down because you don't want to obsess about movement and train it to the point where you forget, forget about all the other fundamentals that are important in Apex Legends, especially as you're learning. I call each of these categories what you want to do is improve them all collectively one at a time. So now in the next portion, what I want to discuss here is really talking about things such as like Aim Lab, which is a very important resource and they're actually sponsoring today's video. Aim Lab is such an important resource that really teaches you. In the description, I'm going to have my own personal playlist on things that I train. And specifically, it's all about tracking. It's all about consistency. Consistency. There are some things that are dynamic clicking that are also important within the scenario list. But it's so important that you understand Aim Lab and understand that foundation of why you do it. So the reason why you're doing so much with Aim Lab is because you want to have the ability to not think about your aim, but focus on the other things that we talked about. Communication with your squad, game sense, and overall positioning. Those things are more important than the foundation, but the beauty is that mechanical aim can be improved. And one of the biggest tips I can provide is that if you feel the scenario is not fun or pushing you to the point where it's difficult, that is the point where you need to train. In the last eight weeks, I've been working on obtaining a Voltaic Master Score, and I'm only 60 points away from Static Masters, which is the last part I need to hit Masters again. So I highly recommend to everybody that you take the time, no matter your level and what you do, that aim training and creating the foundation there is really key to improve. Now, if we segue back even to the test range, you'll notice that you can create these same scenarios and even track objects or people that are moving around. These are all fantastic, but like we mentioned prior, it's very, very important that you do these things also in aim lab to push yourself. Because if you push yourself harder within scenarios that are more difficult and really push you, whenever you're actually in game, they feel a lot easier because you have the right foundation and fundamentals. Do not stress if you're brand new either. If you are brand new to Apex Legends or even a first person shooter, I say that you have the most possibility to improve and learn. There are so many bad things that I learned fundamentally wrong as I was improving in FPS shooters during my time, specifically within games like Battlefield, whether I was playing Overwatch and then, you know, migrating over to Apex Legends. All of those things do add up if you learn them incorrectly. Now that you're here watching this video and this is your first time, whether you're a beginning or somebody intermediate, you can learn the correct foundation to consistently improve. So the crux of this video is to make sure that you do not forget your foundation of move, movement versus aim. There is not one that is better than the other. You'll notice that players that have great movement may suffer against players that have just better positioning and better aim. And those that have really bad aim may not be able to track somebody with good movement. That is the whole point of this video is that you don't forget the other categories and don't obsess. And if somebody might be better than you with movement or aim, that's perfectly okay. There are other things that you add to the squad that are just as important, if not more important, than somebody who's trying to be flashy. 
So I hope that this video is helpful. Definitely try out the playlist that I have listed down below. Try different scenarios. Go with an aim lab. Try out the full spectrum of things that you can learn. Try working on isolating all those things from all the movement I have down in the description down below. But I see this as a reoccurring problem and a reoccurring trend on Apex Legends of just obsessing about one thing of just trying to master super glide. But then you spend, you know, 100 hours in the test range, but you're forgetting everything else that is going to help you essentially win. So I hope this video is helpful out for somebody. Let me know what you think about the playlist. Let me know about any guides. If you want an updated movement guide talking about the comparison, let me know. But this whole purpose of this video as we wrap up and close out here is movement versus aim is a non debate. It doesn't matter because you want all of your categories and what you do to all be strong and equal. You don't want to be weak in any one sector. So take the time, go in the test range, improve practice, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.